Welcome to Like Maria. Today we're going to look at a very famous poem by um, Ted Hughes um, called Hawk Roosting. This is on the GCSE syllabus, um, but also would be useful for practice of an unseen or even an A-level unseen where you're required to work up a theme. So today we're going to find out how to solve a problem like Hawk Roosting. In order to do um, this analysis, we're going to look at a question. Explore the presentation of power in this poem. Um, I'm going to look at the hawk as a predator, um, the position of the hawk at the top of the poem and the top of the forest, and also um, the fact that this poem is written in the form of a first person monologue. Um, so we're going to use these three ideas to work up some points that you could include in an essay on the presentation of power. Obviously, there's a lot more you might say about this, um, but these are three points that I'm going to illustrate how to work um, on an essay. You will also need to talk about context in this poem, um, not if it's an unseen, but if it's one you're using from your anthology, you will need to talk about context. So I'm going to address that as well. Okay, so first off, we have Ted Hughes choosing to write about a hawk. Now, Ted Hughes is very famous for his use of animals. He grew up in rural Yorkshire and he has um, spent a lot of time exploring the countryside um, through his poems. He's particularly noted for using animals and for exploring some attributes of humans through animals. Um, and he does this here in this poem. Um, first of all, I want to give you a quote from Ted Hughes. He says that in his poetry, um, he tries to um, illustrate the foxness of the fox and the crowness of the crow. And I would suggest in this poem, he is illustrating very well the hawkness of the hawk. Um, and he does this by um, referring very closely to the shape of the hawk. He uses the word hooked um, and repeats this, and in particular talks about the hooked feet of the hawk. So as well as the hooked body um, and the beak of the um, hawk, giving this general appearance of the curved nature of the animal, he uses um, hooked feet. So he's really focusing you on this word hooked. And there is a sinister um, suggestion here. If you get your claws or your hooks into something, it means that you are exerting control or power over something. Now, in particular here, um, we are talking about hooked feet and he talks about my feet are locked. And this use of the word foot referring to a human foot um, rather than the claw um, of the bird straight away associates the bird with um, human behavior. This is a technique we call personification, um, using an attribute or a description of a human um, to describe um, something that usually isn't human. Um, and here we are looking at the power that the um, hawk exerts through its feet and that they are locked um, on the branches of the tree. Um, and in a similar way, um, Hughes may be suggesting here that political figures um, and dictators are locked in their power of position and they are very difficult to move. Um, the bird also talks about um, holding creation in his foot, again, that personification. Um, and this suggests that he has a godlike power. He is um, the person that presides over creation like a god. God in the Bible um, made the world. And here we have the bird looking out over all creation. And I would suggest that this is a particular type of arrogance um, showing his power. And it's um, often described with the word hubris. It's a type of arrogance and pride that gods have. It often gets people into trouble um, if you um, are in a position where you um, 
exert hubris. Um, but here we might say that possibly um, the hawk is being like a god um, and has this quality, this hubristic quality. I also want to note something that is often overlooked. Hawk roosting um, here. The word to roost means um, when a bird goes into a state which is semi-sleeping and semi-waking. Um, they are kind of dozing in and out of consciousness, almost um, uh, not quite consciousness, but they often open their eyes um, and can see what's going on. I think this is important here that the hawk is not moving. He is presiding over his realm in a very still, powerful way. Um, he even refers to the fact that his eyes are closed. Um, we don't see him swooping or killing here. Um, and this is a sign of great power of somebody who does not need to act to exert power. If you look at the first line of the poem, I sit in the top of the wood, we um, immediately notice that there is a sense of dominance in the hawk's power. He is at the top of the wood and the hierarchy um, of the wood. He is at the very top, at the pinnacle um, of the trees looking down. It's notable here that he is at the very top of the structure of the poem. In the first line, he is introduced as sitting. He dominates the poem just in the same way that he dominates the wood. So his power is established immediately. This is developed when he talks about the earth's face upward for inspection. Um, he looks down on the earth and they are looking expectantly. The people of the earth, the creatures of the earth or the body of the earth itself is looking towards him um, expectantly. And I would say this word inspection has got um, military connotations and it is as if um, the things of creation are lined up, waiting, um, polished for the commander to come along and inspect them. Um, so I would suggest that Hughes here is not simply writing a poem about a hawk. He is writing a poem about humans who dominate both nature and other people. Um, interestingly here, the hawk cites nature. He talks about how nature helps him maintain his position. He talks about the air's buoyancy and the sun's rays supporting him in his position at the top of the wood. Later in the poem, he talks about the sun being behind me. And there again, there is this spectacular um, sense of power here. People or animals can't look at him because the sun is behind him. They have to almost cower in recognition of his power. Um, now, some readers of this poem have suggested that this is um, reminiscent of the Nazi period. Um, Hughes was um, alive during World War II and the aftermath um, of that event. And some people suggest that the hawk at the top of the wood is rather like the Nazi eagle at the top of the Nazi emblem. Um, and that the power and domination of this creature over nature um, resembles power and domination of Hitler um, over um, his what he saw as his empire. Now, it may well not be as specific as this, but there is certainly a sense that Hughes is exploring how people hold on to power. The last um, point I want to mention is that this is a first person monologue. Parts of it are written in the present tense. I sit in the top of the wood. So um, we are struck by the immediacy of this. Um, and I think this helps us um, to understand that the um, hawk is um, dominating the scene and wanting us to pay attention to him. Um, he is there in the present when we read this poem. And this enhances the sense of arrogance and dominance. The fact that the bird is speaking, again, is use of personification. Birds don't normally talk. Um, and the whole poem is 
um, based on himself and his reflections on himself. So I think certainly this is a very egotistical hawk who has been set up um, by the use of this form of the first person monologue by Hughes um, to talk about himself and that's what he loves doing. He loves to talk about himself. There is a bluntness and a childishness um, to his language sometimes and to his reasoning. Take the line, um, I kill where I please because it's all mine. This shows that he has this simple instinctive need to kill. But you can almost um, envisage the hawk stamping his foot like a toddler. It's all mine. That's the reason. I can do it because I want to and I can. So there is a certain temperamental childishness in this poem. But this is combined with sophisticated use of language and imagery. Um, take the phrase, the allotment of death. An allotment is usually somewhere where you nurture life and you plant seeds and you um, care for the vegetables or the flowers and you bring pleasure to the world um, and your surroundings. Here it's an allotment of death and um, this metaphor suggests that the um, hawk is um, nurturing death and breeding death and of course um, we know that the hawk is a predatory animal um, and that um, he in cultural associations the main thing um, that predators do is kill so yes um, he is using this um, sophisticated terminology and sophisticated um, poetry is given to the hawk to describe um, him as this killing machine. One last contextual point that I think it's worth mentioning is that um, the hawk is trying to prevent change and to hold on to power as a modern or even ancient dictator would. Um, the last lines of the poem, nothing has changed since I began. My eye has permitted no change. I am going to keep things like this. Suggests that he is grasping on, his feet are indeed locked and he wants to hold this power. Um, since he began his reign, but also um, since he began this poem. Um, this refers to him scanning in one of his more wakeful moments the landscape and assuring himself that nothing has changed. And that line, I am going to keep things like this, um, I think is quite reminiscent of um, Shelley's poem, Ozymandias, um, where he talks about um, the dictator um, wanting to keep hold um, of his land. My name is Ozymandias, King of Kings. Look on my works, ye mighty, and despair. And this, in the words of Ozymandias, is very similar to the hawk at the end of Ted Hughes's poem. So I would suggest if you are doing one of these comparative essays, which involves the anthology, you might make comparisons between um, this image of dictators wanting to maintain power and preserve their power um, for the future. So I hope that by looking at the hawk as a predator, um, looking at his dominating position at the top of the forest and exploring the first person monologue form of this poem, we have gone some way to answering the question, explore the presentation of power in this poem. Mm -hmm.